Hi, I'm Bavin Osterhout. I want to talk to you about emotions. Emotions are, are often misunderstood and, and people get the misconception that if someone is experiencing emotion that it's a sign of weakness. But actually emotions are part of human nature uh, and we all experience uh, basically the same emotions. Uh, there have uh, there are newly discovered tribes in New Guinea that uh, have never had outside contact for thousands of years and they have the same essential emotions with the same facial expressions uh, that you and I do uh, when we experience different things. For example, if we experience a loss, we cry and so does everyone else in the world, whether it's Siberia or Germany or Argentina or here in the United States. Uh, emotions are universal and, and actually part of their function is to connect us with other people because when we feel what another person feels, we, we sense a connection with them and a level of understanding. So they, they serve a very useful uh, ser uh, relationship purpose. Um, but one thing that's very important to know about emotion is that it's different from thought, actually very different from thought, and it's a separate part of your brain that regulates emotion. It's called the limbic system, and this part of your brain uh, is actually pretty well intact at birth. Uh, babies experience much the same emotions that, that adults do. Uh, they become afraid, uh, they become frustrated, uh, they feel sad, they feel alone. Uh, they have the same essential emotions that, that most adults do. Uh, the, the thinking part of the brain uh, requires uh, many, many years, actually decades, to fully develop. The, the human brain in most people isn't fully developed until age 25 to 30 whereas the emotions are intact at birth. And there actually aren't a lot of connections between the emotional and the thinking part of the brain. Uh, if you have a, a, an emotion connected with a memory, uh, then that memory becomes uh, more uh, embedded in your brain. For example, most people remember where they were when they heard about 9-11. And, and the tragedy that occurred on that day. So when there's a strong emotion connection, uh, that, that enhances the memory. But emotions themselves aren't necessarily logical. Okay, They aren't a reason thing. So to ask someone, why are you feeling that, uh, is not really a helpful question. Uh, because another part is to remember is that emotions are temporary. Emotions are your experience of the moment. And they're, they're basically uh, kind of a barometer of what's happening in the moment and, and what do you feel about what's happening right now uh, in their normal healthy state. And so, and, and they're dependent on your perceptions. So, and part of that can be what you're thinking. So, for example, I could think about uh, the day my mother died and feel sad. Uh, but then think about the day my son was born and be happy and that can change very quickly. Uh, it depends on what you're paying attention to and where your focus is. Uh, so in our natural state, emotions are, are simply a response to the moment uh, and they involve the body and that's something that they've recently discovered in, in doing brain research is that emotions are linked with movement. Uh, and muscle movement. And that's uh, most obvious in the face. I mean, you can tell when someone is sad or happy or angry uh, just by looking at their face, and it's the same all over the world. Uh, every human being has the same essential uh, connections with their muscles and their emotions. But the emotions also are connected with muscles throughout your body, uh, and there are subtle movements in those muscles when we experience the emotion. Um, and so in a normal healthy situation, if, if someone experiences a loss, they feel sad and there is a feeling and they grab their chest because those muscles in here, actually there's a subtle movement there. Um, and uh, the crying is a natural way to, to release uh, emotional tension and it's a universal thing. People all over the world uh, cry naturally unless they've gotten a message somehow that it's a sign of weakness or, or insensitivity or something like that. Uh, uh, crying is just simply a, a very efficient way, by the way, of releasing emotional tension. So it's a natural thing. The problem we get into with emotions is when we resist them. And we resist them because of, of getting that message somehow that we're not supposed to cry or that, that we shouldn't be feeling that way or, or there, there's something wrong with being emotional or something like that. And, and when we try to stop an emotion, uh, we tense the muscles and that creates emotional tension. Uh, so if someone is, is starting to cry, let's say a little boy is starting to cry and someone says big boys don't cry, here's what he does. He goes 
and it works. He tenses his chest, closes his jaw, holds his throat, holds his breath, stops crying. Okay, it works. Uh, but now he's got all of this tension. Now, if he then lets that go, that's no problem. But if he does that again and again and again, it builds up a pattern of tension uh, that contributes to the stress response. Uh, and it creates that whole interaction where it affects your thinking. So the, the emotional tension will narrow your thinking and you're focusing more narrowly on what's wrong. And the, the video on clearing your mind describes that in more detail. Uh, but that's how a lot of people get stuck in depression uh, is because they're resisting emotions and, and they're thinking about things that are and dwelling on them and worrying about them and going over and over again that are building more tension. So the emotions become less and less accessible and then people start to feel numb and, and after a while they don't feel anything uh, and, and so that's one of the main symptoms of, of depression and, and the difficulties is we lose that emotional awareness. Uh, so when there is an emotional tension uh, the resolution uh, is simply to let it go and the process uh, often takes uh, a number of weeks and, uh, and sometimes months, particularly if there is, is a traumatic experience in, in, in the past where there's been a, a buildup of emotional tension. Uh, but the process is simply to let the muscles relax uh, and the, the video on diaphragmatic breathing and grounding you know, help with that significantly and we'll explain how to do that in more detail. But as you're relaxed and in balance, uh, what I have found consistently over time is the emotions just seem to come up if there is emotional tension and they come up at a time when you're ready to deal with them. Okay. If you have an overload of tension, okay, then they burst out. And then it's like sunburn. Okay, uh, it, it's like the the tension builds up, and the least little thing can set someone off, just like slapping them when they've got sunburn. Uh, but but once we re we resolve the the surface tension, and if there is emotional tension underneath that, what I found is usually when, at a relaxed moment. Uh, people may be watching a movie at home or just sitting relaxing, and then the emotion comes up. Uh, and the, the instructions are very simple. Uh, you simply breathe and ground, and the other uh, related videos will explain how to do that, um, and accept the emotion and let it run its course, and it passes within minutes. It never lasts longer than minutes unless you resist it. If you resist the emotion, you can keep it going all day because you resist it by tensing. So emotion, experiencing the emotion, and particularly crying, empties out the cup. If you're resisting the emotion, you're pouring it in as you're emptying it out, and you can actually pour it in faster than you empty it out, and, and that's the time when people feel worse after crying. But most of the time, if you're not resisting it, if you continue to breathe, uh, you experience the emotion, you let it go, it's gone, and there's a sense of relief. You may be tired or even exhausted, uh, but there's a sense of, of, of relief and, and even a sense of peace uh, that happens after that. So the thing to remember about emotions is they are natural experiences. Even when they're a result of emotional tension from the past, they're natural experiences, uh, but there can be a time distortion on that. And so uh, it's like if um, if someone has a, has a pattern of tension and, and resists an emotion, and so the emotion gets connected with that tension, okay, and they all get mixed in together. Uh, and, and people try to sort it out logically, but remember the emotional part of the brain isn't the logical center of the brain and it doesn't have a lot of connections with it. And what I found is there is not a direct connection between a, a particular incident and a particular emotion that someone's experiencing. They all get mixed in together. Um, I think of it as, as a kind of a soup. Uh, if, I, if I make pea soup, for example, and I put, let's say, a half a pound of peas in in the morning and, and let it cook all morning, and then uh, I look at it and it looks a little thin, so I put another half a pound, pound of peas in, and then I let it cook the rest of the day, and I'm eating it for dinner, and I take a spoon of soup, I can't tell whether the peas in this soup came from this morning's batch or this afternoon's batch. They all mix in together. And from my experience, that's what happens with the emotional part of the brain. The, the emotions mix in together, and there's really no value in 
saying, oh, this emotion comes from when I was this age or from this experience or anything like that. That actually uh, seems to confuse the issue and, and can build up more tension if you tend to dwell on it. Uh, so the healthy response is simply to accept the emotion, uh, to first start with balance, to do the diaphragmatic breathing and grounding so you're not tensing, uh, let the emotion run its course, and it may be very uncomfortable in some cases, uh, but just allow that to, to, to happen, uh, and then it passes and it's done. And once you've resolved the emotional tension, then whenever you experience an emotion, um, you just recognize it as part of your nature. Uh, if it's interfering with what you're doing, you can shift your perception. Okay, so if if um, and that happen na happens naturally in 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 many situations. Uh, for example, I, I um, back in the 1980s, I traveled with EMTs in order to put together stress management training for them. And uh, one of the men uh, treated a young girl who was very seriously injured, and, and there was some question whether she was going to survive. But she was the same age as his daughter and actually looked quite a bit like her. Uh, he stayed focused throughout that whole time because he, his attention was on how to properly treat her. But when he got back to the station house, then is when he let go of that emotions. And that's how to deal with it in a healthy way. So if you shift your focus away, then the emotions change with it. Uh, so it's a matter of, of where we put our attention. Um, uh, the other thing to uh, remember about emotions is there one piece of information. Sometimes people think that uh, it's a good idea to make decisions because that's what they really feel. And your feelings, your emotion, is just your read at the moment. It's one piece of information. It has very little to do with the logical part of your brain. Uh, so, for example, uh, a friend of mine told me about his, his son. We're looking at cars, and, and this was the car he wanted because he really liked the way it looked, and he just felt right about that car. And uh, but there was another car that had less mileage and a better engine, and uh, was about the same money. And his father tried to talk him into that one, but boy, this one just really felt right. And he bought the one that felt right, and it was in the garage within a month, and, and wound up costing him a lot of extra money and created all kinds of problems. So uh, emotions provide useful information, but it's one part of the information of the picture, and we need to balance that with an assessment of what's going around, what's going on around us, and and what our priorities are, and uh, what direction we want to see, see see things move in. So emotions uh, serve a very useful purpose, particularly in connecting us with other people and Give us, giving us information about a particular situation, but they're, they're one piece of information and one part of the decision-making process. So the, I hope that helps to uh, clear up any misunderstanding about emotion. It helps you give a clearer picture of how they really work. Take care.